Hey guys, Scott here. I just had this perfect example come up in the comments just hours after I made the video where I used the PlayStation 5 and PC gaming as an example of how you may want to rethink general life choices when you're moving abroad. Not necessarily Nicaragua, not necessarily anything in particular, and in some ways you could even consider it when you're just retiring or making major life changes or just simply evaluating things that you do in your life more uh, discreetly, more uh, intentionally. And that's a thing I talk about a lot, intentional decision making, uh, designing your life in the way that is best for you, discovering what is good, what does good look like, and then working towards that. These are things I'm really passionate about, not just in my own life, but in others. And this isn't like self-help and, and, you know, life improve. Well, okay, it is, I guess. I don't know. But intentional decision making is something that we teach in business. And this is a way to make your business much better. The same things apply in your life, sitting down and saying, oh, I could make this change that emotionally I may not be interested in or may not be something I feel that I want, but when I sit down and put some logic into it, I think at the end of the day that my overall resulting happiness from all the things that will come into it will be improved. And so this example came up of books, and I should have had this in my mind when I was doing the video about the, the video game example, but this is a perfect follow-up example. So I'm going to talk about it. So someone wrote to me hours after the other video and said they have about 200 pounds of books, about 150 books that they want to bring with them when they come. Uh, they're in this example. They're coming to Nicaragua, but that's irrelevant. It could be going any place. Uh, and, and I did this myself, right? I had a huge library, mostly accumulated during the late 90s and early 2000s. So it was at a time where that made a lot more sense. I used to be quite the, uh, the, the resident in the local borders and uh, uh, Barnes and Nobles. But I had this massive library of books, and at some point I decided I had to liquidate it because owning lots and lots of books was one of those things that owned me. It was not a healthy relationship. I loved having bookshelves. I loved having all these books on, on the shelves to look at. It made me feel accomplished. It looked cool in the house, and I did use them, and I read them heavily. Now, they were technical books in my case. It was all professional stuff, uh, not novels and stories and literature, which I understand is a little bit different, and I understand that not everything's available in different formats, and different people have different things that they're emotionally tied to. And for me, I love paper books. So let me start right there. I am not down on paper books. Love them myself. But let's talk about people looking to retire, move abroad, downsize, uh, move to a new country, move to Nicaragua. Now, one of their questions was, will they be hit with import duties for these books? Wow, possible because there's so many books. I don't think that's likely, even though that's a ridiculous number of books to be traveling with. They're books. I don't think anyone's going to, you know, try to place a value on them and say that you're becoming a book importer, especially if those books are not in Spanish. Who are you going to sell them to? It doesn't look like you're starting a store in reality. So you're probably just fine. I don't think that that is a major concern. The real concerns here just come from how hard that is to move, how much you're going to pay to ship that someplace. And once you get to Nicaragua or wherever you end up going, what happens if you decide to move either just around the country to a new apartment? Or what if Heaven forbid, Nicaragua doesn't end up being the right place for you and you need to move to El Salvador or Guatemala or Costa Rica. Well, you could, but that's a lot of books to haul around. And does that really make sense as having an extra large house to store all those books in? I realize 150 books will fit on one good sized bookshelf, but then what are you going to do with that furniture? Are you going to move that furniture with you every time you go? It's just more things to deal with in life. And personally, I find that having shed the objects of life is one of the great things about moving to Nicaragua. Now, again, not for every everybody and everyone has the things that they're tied to. For me, I'll tell you straight up, it's my camera and, and video gear in general, which you guys know, but also my classic computers. I don't have any of them with me, but I am going to ship them from the United States. That is the one collectible item that I'm not getting rid of. For my children, a Lego collection, for example, that's something they're not getting rid of and we keep in the house. So I totally understand there are things you need to select in your life and say, these are things that I'm going to do something less than practical because it's what's important to me. And that's great. I'm just asking you guys to intentionally make that decision and not just say, well, I already own the books. I must have to, no, stop and think about it and make a decision. And maybe some of the books, some not, right? Be intentional. But where I'm going to give the example here is for most people who have those books, you may like the paper books. You may like that you already own them. You may have an emotional attachment to the physical copy that you have read previously. Or, and if, of course, if it's like a gift from someone or something, okay, keep those. But most people don't have 150 of those. Most people have five of those and then 145 books that are just, oh, these are books that I like to have. And, and while I have other books and it's nice to have lots of books, I get it. 
what we did with our books is books we didn't need at all, had no purpose. I emotionally let it go. I unburdened myself of those books. I couldn't just throw them away. So I donated them. That made me feel a little bit better. Uh, you could sell them. I did whatever I needed to, to pare down my life and not own so many things. And that alone freed me up immensely. But the other thing that we do is then we're very liberal about getting digital books. In our case, we're using Amazon Kindle, but you don't have to use that service. You could use something else. But I use Kindle and Audible extensively. And with that, I have a massive book library. My wife has an even more massive book library. She reads voraciously. I read now mostly only when I have to, but I have read ridiculous numbers of mostly technical and non-fiction books. Now I only listen to books on audio. She likes to physically read them most of the time, uh, but she listens to podcasts a little bit more than I do. We do different things, right? But the one thing that we've done is stopped getting physical copies of books. And this has reduced our costs. We don't have to store them anywhere. We don't have to move them around when we go from place to place. We don't have to have them filling up our house. It doesn't encourage, now books really don't do this, but it doesn't encourage theft. Other things would encourage theft, right? If we had lots of digital assets that were physical, like DVDs or video games on disc, those are things that someone could be like, ooh, I like that and just swipe it, right? And that's that's the risk here. Violent crime, extremely low. We don't have all those violent crime fears that we did in North America, but People just casually stealing a thing here and there, that's where there are fears. Not that people do that in great numbers, but small items here are relatively valuable. And, you know, a video game could feed a family for two weeks. Is that something for someone who's really struggling that they're going to pass up if that opportunity presents itself? Maybe not. But if you have digital assets, that protects you. No one can steal my video games from Steam, my video games from GOG, my books from Kindle, my books on, on uh, CD from Audible, those kinds of things. They're protected because of the way that I store them. So we're able to have massive libraries that are available to us anywhere, anytime. That stuff has been proven to be super, super beneficial for us. Again, may not be for you. Maybe it doesn't meet your need. For me, I don't like reading a book on Kindle nearly as much as I like reading the physical paper copy. It is what it is. I just don't like it as much. But when I am going to read something, I understand that it keeps me from having to keep that book somewhere. It allows me to be anywhere and get that book at any time. I don't have to physically, because you know, if I'm not here in the house, what if I'm traveling? Well, now I don't have that book with me. That's a big problem. But as long as I have my phone or my iPad or my Kindle, I have a way to read that item. And that's important. So it could be that I just keep PDFs. Now, I do buy lots of books still. I don't know about lots, but I do still buy books. Mostly they're books that I'm going to read with my kids or use as part of. We like playing Dungeons and Dragons and Pathfinder. So we have those kinds of books, and I buy them mostly from Humble, Humble Bundle, if you haven't checked those out. There's some good sales on there. You can get some stuff at good price and digital format. So I'm getting PDFs and eBooks, EPUBs of things. I download those. I store them on a server. I make sure I have backups, like real minimal, but I don't have to have anything physical in the house. And we're able to have tons and tons of those books that we own and are available to us anytime, anywhere, all made possible because we switched to digital. So this is a spot where it's worth taking another look is being physical in paper, something that makes sense with your books, or does the move to Nicaragua, the retiring, the moving abroad, the becoming more mobile, the becoming a traveler, whatever it is that's changing in your life, or maybe nothing's changing in your life. And you're just watching this for the self-help aspect of it. And you want to say, oh, you know what? Intentional decision-making. Maybe I'll start buying in digital and see how it goes. Maybe I'll convert one book at a time to digital and see if I'm happy with that. Maybe I'll eliminate all this stuff that's been owning me and digital assets can still own you. So I don't want to say that that is a panacea, but that you don't have to fill your luggage with it, that you don't have to buy a larger house because you need to store all those things. Those are all things that can be pretty important. Like you could live a life that is very, very, and this is one of the things about moving to Nicaragua. So often we have this footloose and fancy free mentality. People just don't own very many things. So everyone in Nicaragua kind of thinks in a don't own things kind of approach. And some, not all, some expats move here and anywhere, and bring with them this American mentality of consumerism. You got to fill your house with things. Every inch has to be stuff. You always just own things, and it becomes part of life, this constant cycle of owning things and just having stuff. You don't need it. You don't use it. It's not the best way, but you accumulate things, and you just get more and more throughout your life, and eventually your house fills up, and you have stuff, and that stuff makes it hard for you to move, expensive for you to live, difficult for you to deal with stuff day to day, and makes you always worry about 
things being protected or a fire or theft or whatever, you could potentially, if this works for you, free yourself of that mental burden, free yourself of that physical burden, and potentially give yourself an easier, more flexible way to maintain your library, move things with you, and so forth. This basically is a mirror copy in book form of what we talked about in video game form uh, just, just the other day. And of course, the same thing could apply to movies. I have a massive Laserdisc, DVD, and Blu-ray uh, library back in the United States, thousands upon thousands thousands of those items, but I've replaced them all with just pure digital copies. In some cases, I just converted the ones that I had into digital and take that. In some cases, we bought them on Amazon or on Apple movies. You know, find the thing that works for you, but we got rid of all that stuff and we no longer maintain with us any physical copies. I do actually still maintain thousands of physical copies in the US that will eventually go away. Same thing with CDs. I think I have uh, uh, several, maybe three to 4,000 CDs mostly accumulated when I was much younger. This is not something I did recently. Uh, but again, now we have Apple Music. Everything that I had on CD is available some other way and I don't have to worry about it anymore. And I really don't even care that I have those CDs and it was a terrible investment that I regret immensely. But it is what it is. And I have this massive collection of CDs. And of course, at any point, I could rip them and use them that way. I did that at one point. But I have Apple Music and it costs so little. I just have access to basically all that music on automatically anyway, plus much, much more. I don't even care anymore. Little things like this, at some point, each of those items became something that we changed. But with you, it may be that these are things you haven't changed yet. There may be other things in your life that you also have to rethink in the same way. How can you free things up? Uh, or how can you simply make intentional decisions about what's best for your life? Step back and look at all those decisions, things you would never question when living in the US. Why would you question buying a physical copy of a book? It's probably the cheapest way to acquire it. It looks great on yourself. You would never think twice about it and you don't need to. But if you stopped and intentionally said, wait, does filling my bookshelves and my houses with books actually give me the maximum benefit versus getting a digital copy, assuming that even getting the book makes sense? Well, if you're in America and those are your factors, you easily could say, yes, the physical book is the better way to go. But if you knew you were going to be moving in the future, does it still retain being the best way to go? Maybe, maybe not. So just think about it and make that decision intentionally. And I think you'll have, if you approach life this way, whether you're moving or not, whether you're relocating, becoming an expat, anything, having a life change or not, thinking in this manner can do so much to improve your life and, and give you benefits where you never realize there were opportunities. See you guys tomorrow.